Now, what I was talking about before where I try to go get these people who know way more than I do and are much smarter than I do, and the only thing I'm really good at is creating systems um, and capturing the system. What I'm going to go do is I'm going to capture what these geniuses are good at, and I want it to be what happens every time, though. So what I have here, so this is what runs Sales Funnel Radio right here. Okay, so I have, <laughs> there's Marley, there's Daxi, there's, <laughs> boom, there's the content in progress now. It's Friday, right? So an episode just dropped? Yeah, he's got a notification. Yeah, he's got a Sweet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, publishing from stage, right? Yeah. So what we go do, and that's, that's probably where Emily is, actually. Uh, anyway. So I am dangerously low on content right now. Usually I am, so I do two episodes every single week of my main show. Every Thursday, I'm sorry, every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time, I have a new episode that goes out. Um, all of the assets that are needed to run the whole show, I keep in a tab right here, outros, passwords, right? Um, logos, audio settings for how I wanted to sound, like all, anyway. Um, how to publish to Libsyn, right? I'm, I'm thinking about the, tr the team that, as they're coming in. How, do I, how, do I sh how should I train them? I'm responsible for that. On one side, I'm going through and I'm thinking through all of the different um, future podcast ideas. And I just, it's kind of a running tab. Most of them come to me when I'm in the shower. <laughs> and I just, it's a running tab of stuff that's going on in my life. Things that I'm learning. Uh, things that I am, you know what's, what's cool is actually there's, there's a few different themes I take on the podcast episodes that I create. The first one is what am I currently learning? And so when I need an episode, I'll be like, well, what did I just learn recently? Another uh, theme that I'll take in the episodes that I create is um, um, I had a wall in my business. How am I going to overcome it? Right? That's a really powerful one because it shows I'm very open with a lot of things going on in, in, in my company. And so I'm like, hey, I, I hit a roadblock. And here's how I knew it was a roadblock, and here's how I'm planning to overcome it, and I'll let you know how it goes uh, going on forward. Um, another theme I like to take is, uh, well, promotion, promotion in general. If I'm going to go promote a product, maybe I'm doing a content webinar. Promotion of some, something in my value ladder specifically. Maybe I'm like, oh, you know what? It's time for like something we just did. Offer lab leads, getting a little bit low. All right, what else can I do? What else can I go run to fuel more of those leads, right? Uh, so uh, Colton and, and Tyler, who a lot of you guys have spoken with, can, can go and follow up with them. Um, another one that I love to go do is interviews. And I'm very careful about how I do interviews. Um, I, was, I had a neat opportunity to meet, and I love the guy. So if he ever sees this, I love you. I love you. Okay, but I did learn something very powerful watching this. I saw John Lee Dumas get up on the Inner Circle stage, and everyone got to ask him questions. And it was really cool. And some of you guys might have been there. I don't know. But what's interesting is like, we all got to ask him questions. What does he do, first of all, right? Entrepreneur on fire, right? And, and how does he do his shows? Interviews. Only, only interviews. So what did everybody ask him? How do you do all your interviews? Fascinating observation. I was standing in the back of the room and I watched him. And he kept trying to talk about like some, like he talked about his content machine, but I think he kept trying to talk about like, like business advice, but he's the interview guy. So I do my interviews carefully, but I make sure that I'm also part of the show because I don't want people to just ask me, how do you run your content machine? I get asked that, but what I really want people to ask me is like, how can I make a better offer? And if I'm only doing interviews, I create an interview show and an interview attractive character. I'm not, that's not who I want to be. So they're powerful because I'm going to go reach to this red ocean and choose key influencers. And I'm going to pull, pull, pull and bring them in. It'll help us scratch their back, get them exposure, scratch my back and my audiences, which is great. Um, but I don't just want to do interviews. Otherwise, I become the interview guy, right? That was super powerful for me to watch. Same thing was happening uh, with several other shows, and they do more interviews now, and they do more single, like, anyways, let people know your own thoughts. Become the attractive character of your own thing. Otherwise, you become the interview guy. Um, another piece with interviews is I make sure that I'm always reaching two levels up on influence. That was the thing that I did do right with the Sales Funnel Radio launch. I reached two levels up in influence. So if I have a small amount of influence when I'm starting, because no one knows who I am, 
There's no way I would really measure this, I guess, but that's just how I launched Sales Funnel Radio. Who has like just a little bit more influence than I do? Okay, a little bit more above them. I bet I could get them on a show because they're not that big yet and they'd be willing to get on the show. And then I go, when I feel like I've leveled up in my level of influence, I go two levels up. Reaching two levels up is the theme that I think in my head when I think interviews. Now there's an important rule with that. When I actually get to interview a guy like Russell, I don't go backwards. And it does piss people off. I have asked people to be on my show and then they said no, right? Or they're like, well, yes, but like I need to wait just a little bit. And it'll be like, even three months will go by and I can feel that like, oh my gosh, the exposure leveled up. And they're like, okay, I'm ready to get on the show. And I'm like, I just interviewed Russell. Like I can't, sorry, doors closed. Right? That's been really powerful for the show's status and authority in the marketplace, uh, especially ClickFunnels marketplace. So now that I've got Russell on there, right, that's why, you know, Alex Sharfman's going on soon and these other key people are going on. I'm very careful that that's how I run that. Otherwise, um, and the reason is because I, I mean, hopefully, man, let's get, uh, let's get Mr. Wonderful on there one day. But if I'm interviewing, he's going to go look at the show, a guy like that. If I'm interviewing people he's never heard of, that's going to be really hard for me to go do that. So I'm trading, I'm literally it's like what uh, Gary Vee says, I'm day trading attention. I'm day trading influence. Okay, it's one of the most powerful currencies you'll have. Um, anyway, so uh, those are like th four of the, the themes that I think through when I'm creating, when I'm thinking through what's going on. So client mission, right? I could tell you about when I went and consulted Roger Love in Hollywood. That was cool. Um, some of my favorite, uh, anyways, I had a lot of stuff. I just haven't done this yet. Campaign versus traffic, um, different offer lab interviews, um, proximity's power. These are all lessons. Money, the great enabler, and I'll think I'll just brain dump my thoughts. They're not ready for it to be an actual episode at this point. When I started creating episodes, all I would do is take the Epiphany Bridge script, the eight questions, and answer them, and then delete the questions, and I was left with my episode. And that's how I started them. Um, and you could tell at the beginning, man, I'm just reading. <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> anyway, um, I always have a column here on the side for episodes that are done, just not ready for the queue yet. Um, anyway, uh, here is episodes that I'm definitely doing that um, I just need to go create. Because this over here on the side is kind of a brain, brain dump. But as I... All, all, all the, the bucket of episodes coming up is always on the left. And then the one that we're all focusing on is the one in progress. And then the complete side just keeps stacking once we're done with it. The real power of this is that I get to see the status in a snapshot where things are. So I don't have to hold it in my head, um, which is super powerful. The major asset is this. This is the thing I think you guys will freak out about the most. Every episode is handled the exact same way. I do not make a change in the system without changing the template. I always change the template. This is the thing that drives it all. So what am I responsible for as the input in order to get a good output? Has anyone ever heard of the book called The Goal? Right, super good book and it uses a manufacturing plant as an analogy for teams. And what it talks about is like, if I'm walking in a line and I've got a row of people, like we're backpacking again, right? And I'm walking and I'm walking and walking. It was not uncommon for me to have a little bit of space after a while between the guy in front of me. What do I do? <sighs> speed up a little bit, right? Now, what does that do to guy three? He's got to speed up even more to catch up with the guy in the front who's just walking at a normal pace. What does that mean for guy 16? They are jogging to keep up at the pace of everybody else who's just going even slower than they are. And the guy in the front's like, man, I'm just walking. Everything's great. The guy in the back is running. These systems, these teams are a series of dependent events. This event can't start until this event is over. So if this whole content is, is, needs to be out the door tomorrow and guy number one hasn't started the thing, guy number two has got to sprint. The last person has got to absolutely haul and they're always in a sprint mode in order to get this out the door. I learned this very much the hard way when we first launched this, this system. I put the system out there and I was like, okay, everyone's gonna launch all platforms at the same time, orchestrated launch. That's how we always do it. Tuesday, uh, Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. All platforms, boom, like 22 of them. Boom, sort of just like blitz in the internet. The problem is that there wasn't, um, I, I didn't go in and tweak like 
an expectation for when the content should be ready. So and 24 hours ahead of time, guy number one is starting, right? And guy number two is just barely getting the stuff and it's going out in 12 hours. And it's like this sprint for the last person. I felt so bad for, the, for some of the people who were doing things. They were like, they were dying. They were dying. I found out the other day that my blogger uh, for Sales Phone Raiders, she spends eight hours per post. Eight hours writing each post because she loves the content. She's married to it. But... <sighs> man, Steve freaking Larson, you got to shorten up some of those episodes a little bit, right? Right? I was like, oh, we got to pay you just a little bit more. She's like, it's totally fine. I love it. When you get tactical, that is hard to write. I was like, oh, Whew. right? But I, you just don't know that. So I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys, like, if you go create a team, so these are the inputs I am responsible for in order to get good output. Number one, I'm going to go forward and I'm just going to, rec- I'm going to record the video episode. Okay. What's going on, everyone? Steve Larson. Okay and I do the Sales Funnel Radio episode. Then I upload it to a Google Drive folder, and each episode has its own folder. There is a raw subfolder and a final subfolder, and I put the actual audio and video in the raw. Okay, so I upload the video and the audio, and I fill out the description in the card. So I go through and I give it a title, and I give it, uh, and when I'm ready to, to do this, all I do is I, uh, let me back this out. I copy it, this episode, I don't know, blah, 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 right? Huge. So we treat this board like the Bible, right? This is the law. This is the law of the episode. So whatever's on here goes out. And there's times where, man, I numbered it wrong, <laughs> you know? And there's times where, you know, and, and, and we've got an epic team. So they'll go through and they'll, some of them will adjust it. But at the same time, it's like, well, Steven, you, you messed up with your inputs. And that's okay. Right, because I'm, I'm, we're all holding each other to that standard. So, and I'll think through the outro. Um, I have a big pile of outros. In fact, let me see if I can load it here. Ooh, yeah. All right, here's Sales Funnel Radio folders. So every episode has a folder. And I ask, that's epic, huh? Here's the done episodes that don't have an episode to go into yet. But let's go to like, I don't know, episode 243. So if I go to final, everyone takes, the, they download that, those raw inputs, do their magic to it, and they re-upload it back to the final folder so that the next person, series of dependent events, can do the role that they were hired for. That's how I run the, run the team. So if I come back to, so I have the outros, which is what I was going to show. So I go back here to outros. Every time I make a new outro, because let's say I launch something new, I upload the script and the audio in just the outro folder, right? I just, I just write it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, click funnel trial. All right, so here's the outro. And it's basically a small, mini little epiphany bridge script. Um, free opt-in course. Oh yeah. Hey, obviously a funnel's already dead if you can't even get anyone to opt in, right? So I spent four hours teaching an audience how to get high up. So anyways, what happens is, so when is the content supposed to be done? I always time it 24 hours ahead of time. So all teams have done their role 24 hours before publish. That way way we can fix anything that pops up, which happens every once in a while. Um, All... Right, then I set the due date for the actual card. Okay, it's going to be this time at 2 p.m. Click save, boom. Now everyone knows, and the card will remind everybody. Um, the Google Drive folder link for just that episode goes in there. Um, I put an Instagram quote. Usually it's pretty fiery, something that they can use when they're creating that content. Anyway, then I assign the card to Mr. Daxi. Goes to Daniel. Okay. Then he goes in and he downloads the MP3 and he checks the comments for any final editing thing. Hey man, I had to film a second intro, but I like this piece from this second to that second. Make sure you pull that piece out. Then go and add that whole intro uh, to the actual main episode itself, right? Anyway, um, add the intro and the outro from the description. Kind of mix and master and run the match loudness thing so it sounds good and uh, export the file as sales phone or radio. Then the number, whenever headline I said, dash final. That way we all know what it means. It's pretty detailed, huh? Then it goes to Marley. Marley! Right there. 
And Marley goes and she takes that episode and downloads and uploads it into Rev, specifically for a YouTube version, YouTube friendly version of SEO for Rev. Um, so she goes and grabs that transcription, creates the thumbnail for the podcast title. She's the one that makes all the, right, the, the, the pictures and stuff, which looks amazing. Checks the comments for final editing, adds the video intro and outro, balances the audio, uploads that to, with SEO uh, to YouTube. Um, it's a lot, right? It's the way I could handle this. Okay. Then she adds it to the playlist. She puts uh, end of the card, like clickables, like the little cards at the end. Okay, it's a little mini teaser that we go and we use later for Facebook and Instagram and all chops out those little 15 second versions. <clears throat> Puts on Instagram TV, gets, gets ready for lots of different assets, okay? And they're re-uploading it back over to the final folder and everything. This is every episode. <laughs> okay, then we upload the thumbnail, the mini videos, Instagram stories, upload certain uh, um, pixel by pixel for all the platforms it'll go on to. Then we sign to Helen. Helen. Helen goes, takes the transcription, then actually goes and edits it. She's the one that like, she's like, I'm spending eight hours. And I was like, Tell me that earlier. I didn't know that. How can we serve you better? So my role in this is to serve the team. What is it that the team is needing? Am I not? So this updates a lot and it will keep doing it because as I go reach out to each person, I'm like, what's working? What isn't? Am I killing you? This back and forth. I'm, I'm tweaking the system, not me. How can I tweak the system to serve what we all do better so that everyone can still have a life. We can still do everything we are and I can keep getting those episodes out. Right, um, Julia, Julia's the one that coded the Sales Funnel Radio blog. She goes, she's a WordPress expert. She takes Helen's blog post, goes and puts it in uh, WordPress, and then they, they SEO the crap out of it. They do so much stuff too, it's pretty awesome. She also goes and writes the teaser email. She downloads a pre-created template in my ClickFunnels account. She just clicks that episode template, and it's for Sales Funnel Radio, and then she writes the teaser from the blog post she just read and times it at 3 p.m. Mountain Time so that it's hit all the platforms at 2 p.m. And then the specific SMTP account that is to go with. Emily, which, is she in here? Emily goes and she is the poster. She does tons of posting stuff, okay? Um, trained by Josh. <laughs> it's been awesome. So she goes in and she... Um, uh, she makes sure all the social destinations have a green check on the home page. She uploads the MP3 um, to the Google Drive folder from Libsyn into Libsyn. She's the one that goes and puts everything in Libsyn, queues up all the content there, press go. Then all the social media profiles manually puts those there. It's a big process. Okay, then we fill out the artwork tab. This is, this is a lot. Set the rating to G, do this, do that. Okay, the only difference, and so that's every episode. That's the episode template. It's pretty extreme. The secret MLM Hacks radio one. Um, I am super low on content. I owe you all a lot of content on Tuesday. I promise I will get it to you. <laughs> Lots already made, just not queued up right. <laughs> anyway, um, so the only difference between the episode template here and there is that we have a Jessica, and most people don't have a Jessica, but Jessica has an agency. And uh, it's the same, very similar process. Um, but at the end of it, I really want to hit Pinterest because a lot of MLMers are on Pinterest. So this is where my Pinterest expert comes in and picks up all the content created so that, that she can go on Pinterest. And then we go and we uh, tag uh, someone in Jessica's team. And Jessica looks to see, right, um, she goes to see if the content was good enough that we should send specific ads just to that content before they get to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. Maybe that's a good pre-frame or a bridge before they see that funnel. <laughs> Oh, that way. But, uh, 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 uh. I'm just messing with you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know how to do this stuff, but I'm good at capturing the system. That's the asset for me. Yes. This is like the million miles an hour version, okay? 